Hebrews, Partners with Christ. Ken Yates presents us with a wonderful, accessible commentary on the book of Hebrews through his book, Partners with Christ. Now, this commentary on Hebrews was not written as a technical commentary for those with a strong handle in the Greek language, but this is a book that is written to help any Christian who opens up the book of Hebrews to be able to make clear and understand the message that was given to the church through this New Testament letter. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed this commentary. I found it to be helpful and insightful. Honestly, having finished it, the first thing I wanted to do was preach through the book of Hebrews again so that I could preach through this book with Ken Yates's wisdom and insights at by my side. The most important contribution that Yates brings to our understanding of Hebrews is both the purpose of Hebrews and the audience of the book. Because when you get those two issues wrong, you take a book that is already complex and you make it nearly impossible to understand. So Yates helps us to see that in Hebrews, the audience of this book is not a mixed audience of some believers and some unbelievers, and how they respond to life's trials will reveal to us all if they really are saved or if they are those who are the lost. But Hebrews was written, and this is the major emphasis of the book, Hebrews was written to believers who were struggling with their faithfulness to Christ, who were, tempt- who were tempted to leave Jesus for the temple. And the reason they were tempted to leave the church is not just because they wanted a cushy, easy life, but because they were suffering under persecution for their faith. These are Christians enduring persecution and suffering. What is at stake is not their eternal destiny. That was already solved when they placed their faith in Jesus Christ. But what's at stake here is their fellowship and their standing and their eternal rewards through their faithfulness to Christ. Hence the title of the book, Partners with Christ. So the main purpose, the main question of Hebrews is not, are you in the family of God? But the question is, how are you laboring in the family business? So the proclamations of Jesus in the book of Hebrews, when we read all the different ways that Jesus is superior to the angels are to Moses, they are meant to remind these partners fellowshipping and working with Christ how superior Jesus is in comparison to the shadow of the temple. And I love this quote in the book. When we remember who he is, we understand how far superior this blood is. The author said in the first chapter that he is God, the creator, the one who holds the universe together with his word, and the one who will rule over the kingdom of God forever. Compare his blood with the blood of a goat. Which is superior? It's really wonderful to read in Hebrews these amazing proclamations of the superiority of Jesus Christ and his work. And Ken Yates really does a masterful job bringing out the glory and majesty of Jesus. And I think he also did a fine job handling all of the famous warning passages in the book of Hebrews as well. To show us how these are warnings to Christians and not to unbelievers. These are not calls for people to place their faith in the completed work of Jesus Christ for salvation, but these are calls for faithfulness to men and women who already believe in the gospel. I found Yates's commentary on a punishment worse than death to be very helpful. We need to remember that for the Christian, there are many temporal forms of judgment, like the loss of a family due to a divorce or the loss of a child in a destructive sin, divisions that can take place in our churches. All of those sufferings are worse than death because for us, death is to be with Jesus Christ. 
His discussion on the heroes of the faith, the famous Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11, was also a great reminder. He talks about how many of these men and women fell to moral lapses, reminding us that what allowed these individuals in Hebrews 11 to stand stand apart was not their superior lifestyles. These are people who stumbled and failed at many times, but what made them stand apart was that they endured and continued to place their trust and their confidence in Christ. And if they did, so can you. So when Yates writes on chapter 12 about how these witnesses shouldn't so much be seen as witnesses, but as testimonies, the purpose of this is so that they can testify that if they were faithful, we can be faithful too. So I need to look at Abraham, not as somebody who is watching over my life like a spectator in a gymnasium who's watching me play a basketball game, but I need to look at Abraham and say, even though that man struggled in fear, even though he had struggles with his family, he was still faithful to continue to keep his confidence in the promises of God. And if Abraham could continue to be faithful, I can too. Sadly, many Christians have been greatly confused by the book of Hebrews. And in part, that is understandable because there are some difficult things in this book about the temple or Melchizedek. But a lot of the confusion when it comes to the letter to the Hebrews uh, is developed based on viewing the audience of the book as a mixed group of saved and unsaved because it just muddies up the message. You're never really sure who the author of Hebrews is speaking to. You don't know what these punishments are that he is referring to. And so it's hard to really grasp a hold of this book. Is he giving warnings to Christians, calling them to faithfulness? Is he calling the unsaved to repentance and to change? How do I know who the audience is in this passage? Well, thankfully, Ken Yates clears up all of those questions. And he makes Hebrews now a book that is accessible for the average Christian. So I ended up being super thankful that this was not a technical commentary because the information that's found in this book is really helpful for Christians at every level. I highly recommend Hebrews Partners with Christ by Ken Yates. If you enjoyed this review and you want to stay engaged in the exciting and insightful world of Christian literature, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the Reveries YouTube channel.